Yum, yum. Welcome to this overview of Uberball version 2. Now many of you are probably already familiar with Uberball version 1, which is a scene that I created back in 2014 and which ships with the default content of Modo. So what Uberball is, is a shading studio which offers a variety of different surfaces and different lighting conditions for you to test your materials under. And the reason that I created Uberball in the first place is because I create materials all the time and I needed a robust environment in which I could create materials that are going to translate well to production scenes. However, after using Uberball regularly for the last three and a half years, I really felt it was time that the scene was updated because I felt it could be improved in many different ways. So the new Uberball is much more flexible and also has much better lighting than the original. And it's been recreated from the ground up, so I've redone all of the rigging, and the other thing you'll notice is the assets now have much better UVs. And the new Uberball is now designed to cover a much wider range of shading tasks. So as well as the main shader ball, there's also a number of render passes which allow you to perform completely different tasks, and I'll show you those in a minute. But let's start with the main shader ball. Now, to begin with, I'm just going to make this GL view a little bit more readable. Sometimes Modo can display metallic materials as black in GL because of the way that the environment reflections are set up. So you can change this by changing the GL reflection to environment, but that can slow down your GL viewport. So what I've got in the Uberball scene is just a matte cap shader, which is set to GL only, and that will just allow a clearer view of the scene in GL. So with that done, let's look at some of the controls. If I click this yellow locator, it's going to bring up the rig for the ball. So there's three items that you can choose from. There's the standard shader ball. There's also a cube. And finally, there's a wedge. And the wedge is particularly useful for transparent or translucent materials. The other thing you can control is the scene scale. So it defaults to this 10 centimeter high ball, but you can also go to a meter high ball and you can see the label in the middle changes. And there's also a 10 meter high ball. And this means that if you're using procedural materials, the scale is going to be accurate. So obviously, if you need to shade a larger object, you want to use one of the larger shader balls. Next, we'll have a look at the zooming controls in this middle locator. In the original Uberball, I had to decouple the GL camera from the preview camera in order to get this control to work. But now you can see that everything works in the same camera and the GL view and the preview match. And finally, if you click on the blue locator on the right hand side, you have the environment controls. Uberball version 2 comes with 12 brand new environments and they are of much higher quality than those I used in the original Uberball. In the original Uberball, there was only two or three environments that I used regularly, but these 12 environments are all really good. The first six are interior environments and I'll just quickly cycle through them. And you can see that they give you a really wide range of different lighting conditions that you can test your shading with. And finally, the last six are going to be exterior environments, showing you different times of day, so you can see how your materials are going to react under different lighting conditions. And there are also some additional controls, so I'm just going to go back to environment number two and demonstrate the environment rotation and the saturation and brightness controls. So all of the environments can be rotated, and as you can see in preview, that is going to profoundly affect how the scene is lit. And again, this allows you just to see how your materials are going to react, whether they're lit from the back, from the side, or from the front. And it's really useful when you're shading to be able to see these kind of things. It helps you to catch potential problems and just to get a feel for how your shaders are going to work in production environments. You can also reduce the saturation of the environments in case you're finding it distracting and you want to work under more neutral lighting conditions. And finally, you can increase or decrease the brightness of all of the included environments to your taste. And it's worth noting that the first environment, which is the default, is actually a fully neutral environment, which has no color in it at all. So as you can see, this is a nice upgrade to the original Uberball with simpler rigging and much nicer lighting and environments. But that's not all. I've also created a range of scenes that are going to allow you to do more specialized shading tasks or see your shading on a variety of different objects. And I've stored these as render passes. So let's go to the passes 
And if I open the passes up, you can see there's now 12 render passes stored in the scene. Now, if you go to pass none, this is just the default shadable scene, which you've already seen. Let's go to number five wall, and this is for architecture. Now, when using render passes, there's one thing which is crucial to be aware of, and that is that auto add must not be enabled. If you have auto add enabled and you start making changes inside a render pass, you're gonna make a terrible mess of your scene. So make sure it's disabled. And that means that any changes that you make will be global to the whole scene and not local to a specific pass. So I've just switched to a material which is more appropriate to demonstrate this particular render pass and I've just let it cook for a while. So as you can see, we're in an architecture based setting and we're looking at a wall at a glancing angle and this is what your shadable material is applied to. So if you're doing anything like plaster, paint or bricks, it's going to be really useful because it allows you to see how your shading is going to react in situ as it were. And the other thing that I've done on this particular render pass is that I've changed the GI settings so that we have eight bounces and that IC is only being used on the second bounce. So you get a more natural render for this kind of shading. So as well as the wall, there's also a floor scene which uh, works in a very similar way just with the camera moved down and this time the shadable shader is applied to the floor so you can see for example if you were doing sort of wooden parquet type material how it would react in situ. There are also some passes that are dedicated to creating transparent or translucent materials so I'm just going to enable this SSS material and I'm going to switch to the splash render pass and this is essentially a scene which is dedicated to creating transparent or translucent liquids and as you can see there's lighting and a preview mesh that are designed exactly for this purpose. Additionally there's a candle scene which is something very similar allows you to see how your subsurface scattering is going to react to backlighting. There is a diamond if you want to create transparent materials or gems. So I've now just added a fabric shader because I'm going to show you what the fabric passes are like. I've got two cloth based render passes First one is the cloth shadable, which is similar to the one that was in Uberball version one. And alternatively, there's also a cushion, which just gives you an alternative way of previewing cloth type materials. And next, there's also a scene which has hard lighting and this would just allow you to see how your textures would react to backlighting so let me just disable this cloth and enable just a standard material with noise map on it and there's a little bit of rigging in this scene so you're able to rotate the backlight just to change exactly how raking the angle is over your texture and there's also a separate control for light intensity and the final options are simply a variety of different objects that you can preview your materials on. And these all come with the environment controls familiar to you from the start of the video with all 12 environments available and all of the different controls. And these just basically allow you to see how your materials are going to react when they're applied to different kinds of surfaces with different kinds of properties. So we have organic objects and also some hard surface objects. And all of these objects are UV maps, so you'll be able to preview your maps accurately. So my aim with Uberball V2 was simply to create a shading and texturing environment that I would want to work in that would allow me the maximum flexibility to see how my materials would react under different lighting conditions on different kinds of surfaces. And I hope that you find it as useful as I have.